Hi, and welcome back to a new episode of Time For You, where we're nurturing presence, love, and wisdom, um, and well-being together. My name is Shelia Stevens, and I am coming to you today from near Frankfurt am Main in Germany. And this is Leah. She'll tell you where she is and introduce herself. Hi. So nice to be here. I'm in Zurich, Switzerland today. And uh, it's snowing outside here. Leah, did you guys ever get any snow? Yes, a lot. Okay. But, mm -hmm, it's melting away again, but I loved it. I love snow. I, I thought it would come down to you. We said so in the last yes. episode. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're in winter wonderland. So guys, we're going to be speaking today about um, noticing where you are. Mm. And uh, I was telling Leah that um, the topics for the next episodes came to me in a dream. And I like literally <laughs> jumped up and wrote them down. And once I had them on paper, I was like, but that's the most simplest of things. That <laughs> sounds like crazy, but so how, how it's coming to me to start with that is I, I'd like to talk about, and I'm going to specifically use the word emotions. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a part of our human experience to feel emotions my goodness, um, we feel emotions mm. all day long. Um, we feel emotions even when we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. That dream that I had came with a, a really specific feeling. Um, and even the even the emotions during the dreams, the dream, were changing as as the scenery was unfolding as my mm -hmm. my brain circuitry was firing and you know sensing the story unfolding mm -hmm. and even in my dream there were moments of frustration uh emotions mm -hmm. <laughs> emotions of uncertainty um then something solved itself and um ah there was a sense of clarity isn't that amazing mm -hmm. even in our sleep we we feel what we feel mm -hmm. in in the form of emotions and now you could you could extend it to other sensations in your body and how mm -hmm. those emotions show up in in your chest or in your neck or your shoulders or your legs you know everyone yeah. Some mm -hmm. of our clients say, it's in my stomach, it's in my head, you know, but mm -hmm. just, we feel things. And Leah and I talked about this for years and all the time. Um, that's being human. Mm -hmm. It's this crazy wild ride on planet earth mm -hmm. going through all the qualities of emotions that are in existence hmm. from sometimes deep despair and pain to euphoria hmm. and, and everything in between. And isn't that amazing? Hmm. That absolute rainbow colored spectrum <laughs> of human emotions and yeah, there's nothing to be afraid of, mm. no matter what emotions you're experiencing. And where I wanted to go today, Leah, and we'll see what unfolds is <clears throat> there's a difference between just experiencing that human life and mm -hmm. all that it brings with it and getting lost in the mm -hmm. emotion mm -hmm. in a way that 
yeah, it's like what's coming to me is like if you the picture in my mind is if you you somehow got put on a wild horse and it just <laughs> ran away, it just galloped away with you, and mm-hmm. you were just on that horse for the ride. And that does happen yes. with, with yeah. our emotions. That's okay too. But it's just good when we're in the human experience to just be able to notice where we are. And Mm -hmm. the story that's coming to me, and I hope I can talk about it without being too emotional Mm -hmm. right now, because, you know, it's telling Leah, I didn't really want to talk about it today, but it's coming to me. My dearest, most beloved baby dog Mm -hmm is in the hospital right now and I am feeling all of the human emotions. I have a great deal of empathy and compassion for the situation that my baby dog is in, being alone in a clinic where it doesn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. It's experiencing a massive amount of pain and spasms in its body and I, I when I think of it, that it makes me feel ill. I, mm. I, 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 I feel literally ill in my stomach. I, mm. I feel physical pain just thinking mm. about that. And I have moments of feeling hope. And um, I think about the doctors and their capable hands. And I feel gratitude he's literally Mm -hmm. in the best clinic in all of germany and i found even people fly from all over europe to come to their the clinic and it just happens to be nearby Mm -hmm. like one of the best clinics in all of europe they've got a ear nose throat doctor there a Mm -hmm. neurologist like i looked on the board there were about 20 disciplines in this one clinic Mm -hmm. and sometimes i feel like gratitude that he's there and if any you know if anything he's got all these people around him and in some moments, I go into deep sadness and missing him, mm-hmm. right? And every kind of emotion, and, I, and I'm and i looking at all of it, I'm feeling all of it, mm-hmm. and I know this is okay. This is perfectly normal and fine. This is, mm-hmm. this is a human experience. This is a hard situation that brings us into these different spaces of emotion but I still stay awake and I notice where I am right now Mm -hmm. because some moments I notice I'm about to get on that wild horse Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to to fear and I'm making up stories about what could unfold Mm -hmm. future scenarios and if I let myself get on that horse it's going to take me riding off into God knows where, Mm -hmm. you see? So I don't know, Leah, that's where I started. And maybe you can pick up from there and talk about like the noticing and what, Mm -hmm. what it means and why it matters. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Shelia. And we are with him and send him all the love we have together right now. Yeah, as you know, the wild horse did um, take me to wild places in my life. And what was really interesting before... I stumbled across the three principles. I I already had tools and techniques and cool stuff that also helped. And for those who do not know me, I I had a secret life for quite a bit. I mm, when I was overwhelmed and couldn't cope with the emotions, um I had coping mechanism that made it a lot worse. And it was drinking and 
or spending more than I had or eating. And um, the drinking actually was the worst. It was not the daily. It was like a quarter drinker. I think there is a term for that. Um, and I ended up in places and situations that were really, really bad. Mind, luckily, or God, probably for some people, was always there with me. But um, there were some dark places. And still, I came out alive. And that's quite amazing <laughs> in retrospective. So even there, even in this really um, heavy things that, that happened because I was drinking, because I couldn't cope with the intense emotions, um, mind was there, intuition was there. I knew how to get out of it or see I saw the next step somehow. Um, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. And it's not the case for everyone. I know that. What, Why I'm bringing the intuition into it is because before I, I didn't know where to listen. And I was confused. So... All these little nuggets or these love letters, as we call them, this awareness, um, I had them, but I couldn't interpret them mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the big change that through this understanding, I started to see, ah, oh, I feel whatever energy thinking principle comes through me, and underneath there are things that point me back toward health. So, even the, the emotion itself is already wisdom. And to start to see that really was a game changer. So being agitated, do you say that? Yes. Uh -huh. Like yeah. stressed, um, overwhelmed, um, having anxiety is wisdom pointing me back to presence, is intuition, is this incredible system. And it doesn't mean that I don't have to feel this feeling. Of course, Shelia feels everything. And that's okay. And that's beautiful and, and rich and sad because it's all of it. But when this component of closeness and heaviness and um, hopelessness, fear. hopelessness, fear comes into the game, then there it is, the pointer to wake up to the presence, to wake up to oh, I'm able to just feel and I don't have to do anything. And that's where a lot of people get into trouble, not because of the emotions, the feelings, the pointers, but because we are trained, we are... Um, we, we we think that we have to change something to feel better, that we have to do something to feel uh, um, hope again, that we, and that's not true. It's in the seeing, in the feeling, in the 
awareness of the emotion that we are already coming back to this inner knowing and wisdom. And from there, we feel if there is a next step. Mm-hmm. And what deepens over time is this dance between being in life with all the emotions and and feeling them and this feeling for the wisdom in it. It's kind of both. Oh like, yes. Mm-hmm. And 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 there is exercise in it. I know that's not a big word in in this kind of conversation, but there is an aha moment, moment, an insight, and then we see it clearly. And still, there is a oh, I'm there. Okay coming back okay feeling deep wisdom okay and over time it becomes more of a a a dance that we deeply know (laughs) and and we're attuned to the rhythm of it more and more Mm -hmm. and at the beginning it's kind of train your ears for this music your feet for this dance and that's okay it's beautiful to learn yeah (laughs) i don't know did you hear something in that yeah i I heard truth in that um and i can only say yes yes and yes to all of that Mm. um Yeah. I just want to maybe just to help clarify sometimes things Mm -hmm. can be a little little help with examples. It's like I loved I loved when you said when those emotions get strong, you know, that's not telling us there's something that needs to be done to make that emotion go away. You know, one of the things I used to do when I felt those strong emotions as I thought, well, I'm going to think about this a lot. Mm. You know, I might sit down and think about my dog's situation, um, remember everything the doctor told me, everything I ever read about this topic, I might go online, get some more information, Mm. more things to think about, right? Like sometimes we think the doing is to think about something intensely Mm. and try to solve it in our mind. Mm. That'll make us feel better. Like, cause we feel somehow that thinking gives us a certain degree of control in, Mm -hmm. in our, in our, in our interpretation. Sometimes we can't, we can't stand the emotion. I mean, honestly, today and yesterday and the day before, mm-hmm. I was in so much emotional, mental pain. I would have done anything. Give, give. If you just said I had a magic wand, I'll wave mm-hmm. it and take that pain away from you. I would have said wave it. Mm-hmm. And some people, when they're in that pain, that painful emotion, they want to do something like you know, drink their pain Pain away away. Mm -hmm. yeah numb numb the pain with alcohol with drugs Mm -hmm. with food with sex with sport with with working like everyone's got their kind of ways that they Mm. they they cope they think they can make pain go away right um some people go into over discussing with friends like reaching out to 15 different people and having hour long conversations to distract themselves from the pain. 
So I just wanted to give those examples, Leah. Mm. Like it looks so different for everybody. Yes. But I love what you said is like, actually, there's nothing to do. Mm-mm. It's wisdom helping you to see where you are right yes. now in this moment, where your attention is on what's energy within you. Mm-hmm. And actually, I would love to talk maybe next time about that for the last six years, um, there was a lot to learn for me in life because the whole big emotions and quotes addictive behavior did fall away I started to learn to feel all the feelings Mm -hmm. I started to become a real grown-up and there were quite a few things to learn in real life Mm. and that was not always that comfortable Mm. and maybe there is something to see in that topic because yes there is nothing to do with the emotion and I started to see oh there is a lot to learn about being an adult a real one Mm. that sounds very juicy interesting (laughs) so I think listen, we do that. Yeah, listen the to the next, next episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because I I really think we should talk about that on the next episode, and we will, Leah, because that is something I've been feeling the last couple of days. Really, so interesting that you used almost exactly the same words that have been in my mind. Mm. Something about this experience that's happening right now with my dog. It's not just my dog. Mm-hmm. My father-in-law mm-hmm. has cancer. Mm-hmm. He's starting chemo. It's all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. at once. And I'm starting to come to becoming an adult, becoming mm-hmm. an adult. Like I this, know. It sounds crazy because I'm 49 no, going on 50 I know. soon. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Let's talk so... about this. You want to close this out, Leah? Yeah. Yeah, for now. um, Our emotions are the guidance. And we are designed perfectly. We always feel where we are. In our head or in life. And um, if it opens up something for you, just a tiny little glimpse follow that nugget Mm -hmm. yeah thanks thanks guys like and subscribe to the podcast (laughs) yes (laughs) and uh, we'll see you on the next episode for getting to be an adult in in your midlife (laughs) i'm curious (laughs) for that conversation see you then bye bye